Yo! Okay, that was cool. Honestly, this is the long-awaited 1,000 sub special I'd announced that I'd do years ago. That video was supposed to be a Q&A as well as a compilation of stuff I did during that time, but I never honestly got around to it. And especially considering that my computer died at the time, I just never honestly can't remember the last time I've actually decided to sit behind a microphone and talk to you guys directly. Um, the last time I've done those were like on phones, but I never really opened up as much as I wanted it to back then, mainly because I myself didn't even know what was wrong. You can probably just say that it was just me being unmotivated at the time, but honestly, I thought it was just going to be a phase that I'd probably get back into YouTube eventually. But no, it's probably just a shift in passions because I haven't been wanting to do YouTube for a long time, like these past couple of years now. I just didn't really care to upload that much anymore, so I apologize for the lack of uploads. And I don't know if it'll honestly ever pick back up the way it does. So I just like, you know, come in out of nowhere and then just disappear out of nowhere again. And it honestly makes me feel bad because while I don't have a large following on YouTube, I did like the fact of just posting on there for fun. But it seems that all my attention has shifted towards making posts and stuff on Game Jaw. So if you see me more active there, that's how you'd see how I'm doing. But not too many people on YouTube see that. And while not that many people are on YouTube watching me, and now with not me being in high school or anything, I do have more time to upload and record videos. I just haven't. And I really haven't been doing anything outside of YouTube, really, anyways. But you guys don't need to hear my giant lecture on where the hell I've been and why I haven't been uploading and why I haven't been feel like uploading. You guys came for a Q&A. So that's what we're going to be getting into. But thank you. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I've never really thanked you guys for all the times you've been there, even when I wasn't uploading for months at a time. Now, with all that being said, let's just get straight into it. <coughs> Fuck. The first question is from Glitchy Glitch, and he asks, what do you think of references of your real life self in games? Now, the one he gave an example on, he said, stop bullying d -Mag, and I honestly didn't even know I was in that one. But in all honesty, I think I hated it at the time, but as I like got older, I just grew into the jokes and like, they're just harmless jokes. So I don't really care that much anymore. But back then, if you were to do it, uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have liked it. That's why I stopped posting my face so much and having goofy ass faces. But to be fair, that was on me. I would have so much stupid ass looking faces and then expect people not to screenshot it. Like, I don't know why I would do that. It was kind of stupid to me, but I, it just, it just grew up on me and now I don't really care. And I'll have to check out that game that you have listed because I didn't even know I was in there. Next question from New Angel Gamer 22 Games. He said, how would the mechanics be? Now, I assume he was talking about the post that I had mentioned along with the Q&A announcement saying that I have a game in the works and that I'm not going to show anything anytime soon. So I'm just going to assume that what he was talking about. Mechanics are pretty cool, though. Can't say much else, but uh, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool. Next question is from Proto Screenbox. He said, I want to know, could there be a Final Fantasy IV? Eh, nah. I never thought about making a fourth game. I didn't even really want to make a third game, honestly. It kind of just happened out of nowhere. If you've seen in the old um, credits for Bonnie's 2 Remake, it said that um, the Bonnie series was done by the second one. But it just out of nowhere, it just came with a third game. And I initially canceled it, but then Fredonator brought it back, and I really liked it. So that's just how that went. It's kind of ironic, but, you know. No fourth game. No. No. Next question is from Wall Games, and he says, Bonnie's 4 when fatty. I don't know. When's the old Told Story 2 coming out? Untold Story. Why is it called the Untold Story when the story's being told? Fucking dope. Okay. Well, next question is from Fedinator, and he asks, What can I ask that hasn't been answered by you before? I don't know. Why don't you go ahead and tell me how you holding up on that number 95? Next one is from Razla. He asked five questions in total. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first one. First one being, can we get a post seven? No, no. A post six sequel was never on my to-do list. It was always just supposed to be a one game thing. So no, no post seven. His second question was, where do you get your clicking skills from? It all just came out how I made games before. It wasn't really a good strategy. I'll just get open source MFAs and look off and steal those. But nowadays, I kind of just go into Bubby MFAs. Gosh, I love the gamer 11 in Slack. But 
I would just go into his MFAs and just see how he did it. And then it kind of just grew on me. Now I just kind of know how it works because you put two and two together. You're part of the reason too, Raza, in some ways. Not entirely because you were also learning at the time I was learning, but you know, for the most part, you were, you know, one of the starts of how I also go today. My games has kind of morphed into this team effort thing. That's why I ask Bubby and Radimus for more help nowadays more than I did before. Simply because they have better methods than me that can just make things so much easier. I don't mean to ask them, but goddamn, they're just so useful. I love you both. His third question was, where did I get my name from? It honestly just came from Ghost Recon. I'm pretty sure anyone could know from my old icons. It just came from Ghost Recon. Um, I don't know where Ghost just honestly came from. Back then, I would just search up ghost icons, but I think ghost just came natural to me because I like the name ghost. I was originally called Mad Manny Gaming, but I absolutely hated that name, so I changed it to Ghost Boy Gaming 17. Hated that name, so I changed it to Ghost Boy Gaming X. Then hated that name because of the past I've had with that name, so I shortened it to Ghost Games and then just Ghost Games X. The whole ghost word just, you know, everyone kind of just remembered me by that, so as I wanted to change it, I didn't really see a point to, considering that everyone knew me by ghost, so like, why bother? That's why I didn't name myself anything FNAF related, because if FNAF were to die, why the fuck would I be wanting to consider it off of a dead character? His fourth question was, are you happy with your current games? Yes, yes I am, honestly. All of them do have their fair share of flaws, don't get me wrong, but I don't let that disorient me from making more games or learning off of those mistakes. I don't want to just be considered as the guy who can't take opinions, because I do. But if you don't understand my mindset, then I'm just not going to listen to it. Post 6 has stuff that I wish I did better. Barry Sue has some stuff I wish I did better. Monty's 3 also has some stuff I wish I did better and I wish I spent more time on it originally instead of having to make a major update that stresses me out. Each one of them has their fair share of flaws and there are some that I don't like. But majority of them that I release nowadays. While flawed, I still really enjoy working on them and I still think they're very enjoyable games. And Post 6 is a great example of that. I don't like it graphically speaking, but I love the gameplay. I think the team did like a really good job with it. So yeah, shout out to everybody who worked on Post 6. You guys did amazing jobs. Ugh, I sound so dead inside, but this is just genuinely how I speak when it comes to speaking to an audience or someone like a family member. Like this is, <laughs> this is no different from how I speak in real life. It's honestly kind of shocking that I haven't messed up as much as I thought I would. And his last question is, what games inspire you to make your own? Ugh, they come from a lot of random old fan games like the She Shipped at Austin or something like Fast Bear Return, Six Horrors, or something like Finest of Chucks. More of a bigger impact than I ever thought they would be. They have all really inspired me in a way to just not only make my own, but just to improve off of what they made i wasn't good at it at first but those games are an extreme impact and without them i honestly don't know where i'd be today next question is from truckster 77 he said what are your thoughts or predictions on the fnaf movie as of right now not much i don't really care to see the final phase movie as much as you guys think i would i mean it's pretty exciting don't get me wrong and it's kind of weird seeing fnaf in the mainstream i still am gonna watch it though with my friends from real life but I just don't really care all that much. In fact, I didn't really want to see it at first, but there were more people in the group that wanted to see it. So I'm like, okay, whatever, might as well. Next question is from Doctor. And he asks, what was it like when Post 6 was in its very early development stages? And what were any stuff in the FNAF fan game that were originally intended to be used that ended up not being used or slash scrapped? Not a whole lot from the game was scrapped. There were some things that were changed, but not necessarily scrapped in the way that people would think. Um, Night 5 was actually supposed to be in color and everything, it was supposed to be a lot more classic than how it actually turned out. The game took 4-5 to five months to complete and not too much in the gameplay side of things really changed other than the scrap the Loom Boy jump scare in the main gameplay frame. Nothing was really removed, more things were just added over time, like the classic mode, that was like a last minute feature. So yeah, there was maybe a couple dialogue differences and maybe just like really small text changes here and there, but majority of the game just stayed the same, besides Night 5. I can't go into more depth on how Night 5 was, it was basically just like how the classic mode is today. Like it was supposed to be a lot more like the classic mode I ended up showing, but it just turned out into this whole little like side gameplay thing. No other way to really explain it. It just it just changed over time, not really anything was scrapped or removed, just just changed. Next question is from Alexandria X. His question was what's my favorite fan game that I've made? 
It's got to be a tie between like Post 6 or Berries 2. Those are two really good games of mine that I really enjoyed working on. I don't like the coding for Berries 2, that it has no fucking groups. I hate myself for that. But for the most part, those are really good games. As I said earlier, they have their own fair share of flaws, but like out of all the games I made that are full of flaws, those are my favorites. Like, those are really, really good. Next question is from Africa Gomez. He asked six questions in total, so we're just gonna go ahead and start down on the list. First question being, which FNAF game is your favorite? I honestly have to say something like FNAF Sons and Location. I just love the gameplay, I love the voice acting. It just, it was a big difference compared to how FNAF 4 was or FNAF 3. Like, I like those games too, but just, just the location has this like really like great memory inside my heart. Love it a lot. Majority of people in FNAF community say Sister Location is the worst one, but to me, that's like my favorite. I love that game. Really enjoy playing that game. Question number two is, what FNAF game did you not like? I like all the FNAF games, really. Like, I don't really have any problem with any of them. Like, FNAF 3 is probably the weakest when it comes to like being scary, but all of them are really good in storytelling and gameplay. People say FNAF 3 is like a strong suit when it comes to the story, and it's not really scary. And while that is true, I see myself still getting scared of FNAF 3 here and there. Just not as much as I'd say FNAF 4 or such a location or anything like that. So to answer your question, when it comes to being scary, maybe FNAF 3. And maybe when it comes to like, I don't know how the game plays, maybe FNAF 6. But like, I love them all. They're all very integrated into my life. That's like the best way to put it. Just all very integrated in every way, shape, or form for each one. His third question being, what is your most least favorite fan game you've made? I won't pick my earliest games considering that those are obvious that I hate those. Like, I fucking hate those with like, passion. I'd probably say something like One Within a Night of Freddy's Remastered. That major update, I could have did a lot of things better at that time. But to be fair, I haven't released a game in such a really long time at that point. Literally gone a whole year without making a fan game. And then I just pounced right back and pop out that garbage. Yeah, I recently made an update that made things slightly better, but the game is extremely flawed and there's nothing I can really do about it. And I just want to move on from it. His fourth question being, which fan game of yours do you think is your best work? Post 6 was a lot of team effort, so I don't really want to pick that one. So I have to say something like Barry's 2. While the renders weren't mine, majority of the coding was me. That was like peak GGX code. Coding is fucking garbage compared to how I do things now. And there's still some things that are broken in that game to this day. While well, I probably could fix it, that's just an old game. And I don't know if I made that clear, but I am trying to move from my older projects and stop updating them completely. His fifth question is, how did I find FNAF? I knew about FNAF during the time when FNAF 3 came out, but I didn't really care at that point. It was when my cousin showed me FNAF 4 is when I really got hooked on the Phantom Freddy's as a whole, because back then I would watch Mortal Kombat videos, and that's how I found Cory X Kenshin. It's actually how I had found Markiplier. His FNAF 4 compilation video had me really hooked onto it, so I just kept constantly watching it over and over. And FNAF just kept appearing on my feed, and then fan games started to appear, like Planet of Candies and The Return to Freddy's. I kept watching more and more and figuring out how to download all these on my phone, and then I just kept posting more and more about FNAF, and I just came instantly hooked into the FNAF community. And then I recently made a game jar account at that time. So yeah. And his last question is, how did I meet my friends? Now, I am going to speak on two friends and then speak on another two friends later because two people had asked that question. I guess I'll speak on how I met Predinator. Now, how I met him was honestly quite ironic. I saw I saw his game at the time, Finance at Bradley's, but I did not like it. But my friends, Freddy and Android, really liked the game and then a second game was coming out and they needed voice actors. But it didn't really even end up mattering simply because the freaking voice actor roles in Finance at Bradley's 2 end up being scrapped anyways. <laughs> we had a few mishaps here and there, but I started adding in the group chats and he started playing video games with us and he just kind of became a main source of fun in the group that we still have today. Then I helped with one of his games and he started helping with mine and yada 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 and yeah, you get the idea. That's how I met Fredonator. How I met Razzle was just the fact that he was a fan of me when I had my old channel posted back then. Android had gotten into contact with him in Google Hangouts and added it to our main group chat, which he was very excited to meet us all. He's super friendly, so he got along with everybody in that group fairly quickly. He started to help Android and he started to help me learn cinema, learn how to get models, and learn how to do other things like code. There was loads of controversy I would get myself into with him, but nothing that has gone public. I think Razzle being my friend is very impactful as well. Majority of these people I'm with are honestly really impactful, but he definitely has the most. Not the most, but one of the most. Next question is from Dalen TV Gaming. He had asked four questions, and the first one being, how did you come up with your name? I already asked this one earlier, but just a quick recap, it was Ghost Recon. 
So shout out to that game series. His second question is, what is that guy in the image? Is that your son or a mascot? Now he's talking about the image that was attached to the Q&A announcement post, that little skull icon. Yes, that is supposed to be me. It's not exactly an OC, but like when somebody needs like a reference or drawing of me for like, say example, a thumbnail or a group drawing, yeah, that'll be me. That'll represent me. I don't have a persona. I don't want to be represented as a mouse. It's cooler to be represented as a skull or something. It's a lot cooler. It's a lot cooler, bro. His third question is, what games do I have next? Eh, not a whole lot. Just a bunch of collabs with other friends like Freninator, Freddy, Android. Not too much. Majority of them have been announced already. I got a game in the works under my profile, but not much on that yet. And his last question is, how am I? How am I? How am I? I'm doing fairly fine though, thank you for asking. Not a whole lot happening outside my life behind the scenes, but I'm passing through. Next question is from Milky Waves. His question was, why are you so handsome? Saying these questions with such a dead inside voice, honestly, is super depressing. I don't know why I'm so handsome. I guess I'm just built different. Just got that handsome California lifestyle. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. All right, next question is from the glitched one. And he asks, what is your favorite FNAF character from each game in order? For FNAF 1, that definitely has to go to Bonnie. I mean, without Bonnie, Final Fantasy Bonnie wouldn't exist. <laughs> Other than Freddy, Bonnie is literally iconic when it comes to horror shit because he was the first to jump scare almost anybody in the FNAF community other than Freddy in the power out scene. For FNAF 2, I have to say someone like Wither Foxy. I thought his design at the time was super cool. Honestly, it still holds up. I really like Wither Foxy. FNAF 3 is Spring Trap. I mean, it's the only good model in the entire game. Can't really say much else. Shout out to Springtrap. FNAF 4 definitely has to be Nightmare Fred Bear. Coolest design out of every FNAF game. Dope as hell. FNAF system location, I have to say my favorite character in that game is Ennard. Ennard used to scare the shit out of me. I think his design is really, really cool. Out of all the FNAF character designs, I have to say Ennard inspired me the most when it came to shit like that. Can't really say a time where I've made a design somewhere off of Ennard, but man, it really did inspire me when it comes to Withered shit. In FNAF 6, it has to be Scrap Baby. That is like literally one of the coolest god designs other than Nightmare Fredbear. For FNAF Help Wanted, I'm gonna pick Glitch Trap. While I haven't really looked in FNAF Help Wanted as much, uh, Glitch Trap was a really cool design that I've seen. And for Security Breach, I'd have to say Montgomery. He stands out, he stands out a lot. Out of all the characters, he, he stands out. You don't really see someone like Montgomery much. Next question is from Mimic. <coughs> He says, do I have any random helpful tips in Glitching Fusion 2.5? He also asks, why is my favorite FNAF character, Bonnie? Not much I can give on the Click Team side. I thought about making tutorials, but I just never really got around to it. And I don't really feel like I'm suited for the job to make Click Team tutorials. There are other people more deserving than me to make a Click Team Fusion tutorial. Honestly, all I can really say is just don't lose hope, you know? Try and stay motivated and keep practicing. You're not gonna like it the first time, but shit. You'll get used to it, and it's honestly fairly simple. I'm pretty sure you've seen my old games. Those weren't even fully coded by me, but you can just see how I used to be and how I am now. Very, very different. And to answer your question about Bonnie, he's literally iconic. The best character in the game other than Freddy. Now Freddy gets shit out of me, but Bonnie was the first. Love him, he's a complete classic, and that's exactly why I made a FNAF game about him. <laughs> and it sucked and I made a remake and it still sucks but it's better. Next question is from Phonics21 and he said, since you're mostly known for coding and click team, how did I start off doing so? And how did I get to the point where I'm at today? It all started with click team tutorials that I searched up on YouTube. They were all god awful but they were all I had at the time since not that many people were really good at coding, especially in the FNAF community during 2019. You have your fair share of picks, but none to the average user, so I have to get creative and search up either ClickTeam tutorials or find some source codes. Then I started getting into contact with people like MobyGamer11, and he would send me his MFAs and I would just study off of those. Those MFAs were extremely important to me because they quite literally taught me what I know today. Now I don't really use that code that much anymore, and I know other methods, but to get the gist of where everything was, yeah, those games made me understand. Tell y'all, click team ain't that hard to do. It's fairly easy once you know where everything is. Trust the process. And the last person is Slicey Sauce 10. He had asked five questions in total, so let's get down the list. First question is, how did I come up with the idea for Fun at Bonnie's? I'm fairly certain Fun at Bonnie wasn't the first game I initially thought of, but I needed to start somewhere, and I couldn't just start as ambitious as making a game like Fun at Berries like I wanted to at the time. So I decided to make Fun at Bonnie's instead. Now I honestly didn't think 
that I would make something like that up until it actually started going into development. I just thought of a random FNAF character that I liked the most which was Bonnie and just made a game about him. It really really sucked at the time and it was really just a photoshop fucking cringe lord. It wasn't the first but you get the idea. I had to start somewhere. His second question is what was the first game I ever created? It's honestly still there to this day. It's actually one with an Attic Freddy's original. It's really fucking garbage but there it is if you want to play it. <laughs> His third question is how did I meet my friends? Fredinator, Radza, etc. Now, I already explained Freddy and Rado, so I'll just go ahead and try and sum up Freddy and Android in one, and Joel in the other, or J Nitty. Freddy and Android had actually met at the same time. I met Freddy a little earlier than Android, but um, we all just made a group chat and Google Hangouts and just started talking about FNAF, recently the new Mac Tonight at the time, and a bunch of other fan games that we were really excited to see and just talk about. We would talk for hours and hours and hours, all day, all night, just talking about FNAF loving FNAF, and then talking about our future projects. The group's three origins were just me, Freddy, and Android. And without any of us three, we probably wouldn't have met other friends like Fredinator and Joel. So shout out to those two bros, they're really, really cool. And then there's Joel, which I actually met through Android. If you guys don't know Joel, he's the same person who made Post 6 with me and is making the upcoming game with me. Out of all my friends, I've had the most controversy with Joel, but have honestly just made us grow stronger because even after all the drama we had, we still stayed close friends and we make really good games together. He gives our games that we post on my page a really interesting style and it makes them really stand out compared to previous games that I've posted in the past. Without him, honestly, they look a lot more generic, so you can thank him for that. Extremely nice guy, extremely helpful guy. Best friend of my life. So yeah, Joel, if you're listening to this, thank you, bro very appreciated. The fourth question was, what was the first FNAF game I played? It was actually the FNAF 3 demo that recently came out during that time. I was extremely scared, but I still went ahead and played it, and I immediately regretted it, got fucking jump scared by Stream Trap, and deleted the game. I know, I know, I was bragging earlier on how FNAF 3 is the least scariest FNAF game, but man, at the time, it scared the shit out of me. Nowadays, it doesn't scare me at all. And the last and final question, which he said this is optional, but I'm going to answer it anyways, is what's the cringiest thing you've ever done? And that is excluding my old games, because that's obvious that those are the cringiest things I've done, which is understandable. Uh, definitely having the idea to make a joke game. I'm not that good at cracking too many jokes. I was going to make a joke game during like 2019, but it never came to be. It's called like Funnest with Makis, because I was a real Sir Halo fan at the time, but I never really finished it. I think I had the menu. I don't really have any screenshots to prove it, but it was there, unfortunately. And it really, really sucked. It's like not even funny. Yeah, so that game died down and all my ideas to make joke games with it. Whew. We did it. Those are all the questions I were given. Initially, the post said I was going to wait about a week, but I just wanted to get it done and over with now, considering that that many questions were pumping in. So I was like, okay, whatever. Two days passed. Not that many questions. Might as well just go ahead and make the video. I know my upload schedule is extremely inconsistent and there's honestly no undoing that considering that I don't really have much of a passion to make YouTube videos as much as I used to. This is a lot more harder to make than I honestly thought it would be. I thought this would be really simple and this would go fly by but I kept messing up and having voice cracks and I'm not that much of a social person so when it came like actually doing questions, ugh. It was a lot harder than I thought but I wanted to do it for you guys considering that I've never really done something like this. And I really had a long overdue 1000 sub special to begin with even though i did sound fairly socially awkward i think this is one of the better options to do to open up and speak to you guys about like questions that you guys have about me rather than just to stay in complete silence anyways yeah that actually pretty much wraps up the q a slash 1000 sub special that i did not too much to add other than thank you guys so much tremendously for 1000 subs and thank you guys for being there and supporting me throughout my entire game job career this video took a really long time to do, but thank you all for watching. We would really appreciate it if you guys, I don't know, hit that subscribe button, like the video, something really helped me, really pushed me to make some more videos for y'all. <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm done. Okay, goodbye.